and welcome to the Pro Yaki Report, Season 1, Volume 4, Tokyo Saber. I'm Michael Westbay, your host. This past week has seen a great deal of mourning going on. First off, as a code monkey, I wouldn't be worth my weight in caffeine if I failed to mention the tragic death of Aaron Schwartz. Every time you open a syndicated podcast or click a link on a sidebar, whether it be from iTunes, FeedBurner, or even JapaneseBaseball.com, it was the work that Aaron did at age 14 that brings that to you and makes that possible. Along with constitutional lawyer Larry Lessig, Aaron helped to create the Creative Commons license under which this podcast is distributed. This young hacktivist has done a great deal to see to it that the internet remains free and open. The tech community and internet as a whole owe a great deal to this lost crusader. During the January Sabre meeting on January 19, 2013, word came in of the sudden passing of Nayakoki, better known as Yokozuna Taiho, a 32-time sumo champion. And just this morning, January 20th, while I was preparing for this broadcast, word came from fellow Saber Tokyo member Steve Lambacher of the passing of Stan the Man Musual at the age of 92 and Earl Weaver, 82. But it was to Tokyo Saber member Yoshinari Tobe, 78, to whom we gave a moment of silence at last night's Sabre Tokyo meeting. Tobe-san was one of the 15 founding members of Sabre Tokyo, the first meeting being held at an onsen in Atagawa on the eastern side of Izu Prefecture. Tobe-san was the author of many non-fiction books about baseball, ranging from training books for high schoolers as well as biographies of famous baseball players. He also covered baseball in Cuba, Taiwan, as well as Japan. The warm, big-hearted sports writer was often described as always being on the road. Otani signing. Vice Chairman Ichido Shinohara led off the meeting with a presentation and a short discussion about Otani signing with Nippon Ham and some of the criticism that was raised in the aftermath. For example, Rakuten's Hoshino Kantoku raised the, I guess you would call it a theory, that Otani and Nippon Ham colluded with one another in order to dissuade other teams from attempting to draft him. The whole idea behind this theory is basically what the Giants had done through much of the draft history in getting players to declare that they would go to the Giants or refuse to sign with anybody at all. And we saw this particular thing happen after the 2011 draft when Sugano refused to even listen to Nippon Ham's offer and instead waited until this year to be drafted by the Giants. Still, most agree that Nippon Ham in this case was taking the usual, or actually unusual for Japanese companies, um, business case of high risk, high rewards. So, whereas in 2011, they kind of uh, didn't get what they wanted out of Sugano, they did hit the jackpot this year with Otani. The discussion that followed the presentation and, um, well, much of the middle of the presentation, basically talked about Otani's naivete that he would be going directly to the major leagues. Um, And also somebody brought up the uh, comparison and contrast to the route that Max Suzuki had taken. Hall of Fame Voting After this lively discussion, Toyoaki Hiruma stepped up to the plate 
and pretty much made this Saber meeting his. Also one of the founding members of Tokyo Saber, Hiruma-san gave a brief eulogy to Tobe-san, then launched into his presentation about Hall of Fame voting here in Japan as well as in North America. The gist of the talk centered around what is the purpose of the expert committee. The expert committee here in Japan is made of 17 to 18 members of the press plus living members of the Hall of Fame. However, because you don't have to actually play at the professional level here in Japan in order to be considered through the normal process of getting into the Hall of Fame, the experts committee the expert committee's role is unclear. Furthermore, what qualifies one for the Hall of Fame is also unclear. For example, Yoshihiro Yoshihiro Sotokoba was selected for the Hall by the Expert Committee this year. While he does have some very good accomplishments, such as the Sawamura Award, and he's thrown two shutouts plus a perfect game, his 131 career wins kind of make him unhaul worthy shall we say in the eyes of many people so he has not been able to get voted in even though he clearly qualifies having played 15 years um for a selection via the normal process but take somebody like Randy Bass Randy Bass has not played in Japan for 10 years not that that's an actual um criteria so how is it that the expert committee selection can take someone who would normally qualify under any reasonable conditions and select him and not select somebody else very worthy who is often not considered because of his short career at the professional level here in Japan that brought up a uh, pretty good discussion amongst everybody. And Hiruma-san suggests that the vote also accompany a reason for the vote in order so that something like Sotokoba's case, where this was his second year of being considered by the expert committee. Last year, he came up one vote shy. So this year, people had him in his in their mind that he was almost deserving. But are they basing that on a public relations campaign? Are they basing that on what he really did in his whole career to deserve being entered being admitted into the Hall of Fame these kinds of if you let's see if you have to answer why did you select this person then the people who are making the selection have to actually go through and do research and not just say oh yeah well this guy sounds good and mark him so Basically, what Hiruma-san is saying is that transparency is a good thing for NPB. Something a lot of us have been saying for a while, that NPB needs more transparency of its governance. And by the way, along with the theme at the beginning of this, Aaron Swartz based his whole life and work with regard to the influence of big money in media, politics, and public opinion. He wanted transparency at every level. So, why would, wouldn't would a third of the current inductees cast a vote? Um, that's another issue with the expert committee, is the lack of participation. 
it maybe because they're kind of getting along in age and don't feel they have the necessary knowledge or the ability to do research on the candidates or you know they might just think that their vote doesn't really have any weight because they're not so up to date with what's going on in professional baseball also many of them who are still alive were not necessarily in professional baseball to begin with so how might transparency act as a deterrent to voting and thus cause the number of votes to go down well members may fear criticism about who they're voting for and the reasonings behind their votes. So that could also end up contributing to more apathy and make the and kind of bring the bar down lower to the necessary number of votes needed. And this, of course, could lead to other corruption, uh, buying of votes. And, of course, campaigning for votes. Hey, Randy Bass, why don't you run a little campaign with the uh, current Hall members and see if you can get in? Anyway, this is clearly not an easy issue to tackle. And uh, if you can read Japanese, I highly recommend you go see Hidumasan's blog at weblog.hochi. Dot co dot jp slash hiruma that is weblog w e b l o g dot hochi h o c h i dot co dot jp slash hiruma h i r u m a auction the annual auction is a way for members to support Saber Tokyo while trading some of their baseball related memorabilia and stories that go along with them with the group. Baseball books, both in English and Japanese, made up the most popular items this year. Caps, t shirts, bobblehead dolls, pins, and many other baseball related items change hands each year. Half of the auction price goes to the seller while the other half helps to fund Saber Tokyo events and the running of meetings. And that brings us to dinner. The array of items, mostly having to do with chicken, at Shiba no Tori Ichidai are excellent. But more than the food, I just like to quietly listen to a lot of these experts who have gotten to witness firsthand many exciting um, games and events throughout the years. It really is worth going to more than for the food, for the conversation. Quiz time! To conclude the evening, there was a pop quiz about everyone's knowledge of not only J Japanese baseball, but Major League Baseball as well. And here, too, Hiruma-san really shone. He and his guest, who he's known for a year online, but this was actually the first time he'd met him in person, ran neck and neck with answering the quiz questions right up to the end. Hiruma-san ended up one point ahead to take home the grand prize. And now it's time to check out... The Pocket Calendar! First on our list, we have the Japan Baseball Weekly Podcast coming out on January 28th, a week from now. The next Saber Tokyo meeting will be held on the third Saturday of April. If you are in the Tokyo area and are interested in perhaps joining us next time, it would be a good idea to contact... Uh, me and I can forward the information on to our representative and keep you informed where and when the meeting will be held. Otherwise, 
Rookies are starting to report to dormitories, and teams are preparing for camps to start on February 1st. And I guess uh, that wraps up this Pro Yaki Report. It's been nice having you. Take care.